Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy, here for the Daily Blob, where we say, I... I don't think this is going well for us. I don't think this is going well for us. I think the China Man is going to win. I do believe, I do believe the China Man is going to win. And it's mainly going to be because of our dumbass strategies to be anti-China uh, for whatever reason. So anyways, I've done many videos. I've talked about the United, how the United States is incessantly against China and how we've decided that Chinese civilization has gone just far enough. It has gone far enough where we feel uncomfortable if they go any further and therefore they should stop. Uh, and I've talked about how China uh, doesn't want to stop. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and that gets us into the modern world. Uh, so the big thing uh, that the U.S. keeps touting is our superiority in artificial intelligence, right? We have NVIDIA uh, that designs the hardware. We have companies like OpenAI and Anthropic that creates AI models and that type of thing. And we have been informed that we must stay preeminent in the AI arms race. And in order to stay preeminent in the AI arms race, we have to try to kneecap China. And uh, surprise, 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 uh, China doesn't want to be kneecapped. And so uh, yesterday, uh, I did a video talking about Baidu, right? So Baidu uh, just open sourced uh, uh, one of their most advanced uh, LLM models so that anybody could use it. Uh, and basically the idea with that particular model is uh, compared to whatever the DeepSeek's uh, latest version that came out, uh, it can run at a fraction of the cost. And so one of the things with this uh, open source model that uh, Baidu is putting out uh, is the idea of um, for most tasks, it'll be effective for what it's trying to do. And it will be a lot less expensive than uh, trying to use OpenAI or Anthropic uh, for those types of services. Uh, so that was yesterday, that was yesterday. And now we have uh, Huawei, Huawei is coming out and saying, oh, oh, are you, are you giving away AI, LLM models? That sounds like a good idea. I think we should give away LLM models too. Uh, the interesting part about this though, is that uh, Huawei is actually giving away their LLM models to drive business towards their hardware. Uh, so from CNBC, China's Huawei open sources AI models as it seeks adoption across global AI market. Uh, and so basically the idea here is um, Huawei has these, uh, these chips, these AI chips that they produce. But one of the big questions in life, again, the technology world, is just because you have the hardware, right? Having software doesn't mean you have a full solution. Having hardware doesn't mean you have a full solution. It's when you have software and you have hardware and you have the full stack, tech stack, that's when you have a full solution. So they've been selling their hardware and what it looks like now is that they're going and basically giving away their uh, LLM models that are designed to work most effectively on their hardware that then start driving hardware sales, right? So we have the LLM to run, we have the, uh, the hardware that it's optimized to run on, so now you have this complete uh, product that you can actually put into your systems, right? And this is where I've argued for a while that we have to be careful about because once things are implemented, they're in incredibly hard uh, to basically uh, decommission again, right? Once something goes legacy, uh, you're never, ever, ever going to get away from it. Uh, if we look at this, uh, Huawei has open sourced two of its artificial intelligence models. A move tech experts say uh, will help uh, the US blacklisted firm continue to build its AI ecosystem and expand overseas. Uh, the Chinese tech giant announced on Monday the open sourcing of the AI models under its Pangu series, as well as some of the, uh, its re model reasoning technology Tech experts told CNBC that Huawei's latest announcement not only uh, highlights uh, it is solidifying itself as an open source LLM player, but also how it is strengthening its position across the entire AI value chain as it works to overcome US-led AI chip export restrictions. In recent years, the company has transformed from a competent uh, private sector telecommunications firm into a muscular technology juggernaut, straddling the entire AI hardware and software stack, said uh, Paul Trillio, partner, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 
Uh, in his announcement Monday, Huawei called the open source moves another key measure for Huawei's Ascend ecosystem strategy that would help speed up the adoption of AI across thousands of industries. The Ascend ecosystem refers to AI products built around the company's Ascend AI chip series, which are widely considered to be China's leading competitor to products from uh, NVIDIA. Pangu uh, being available in an open source manner allows developers and businesses to test the models and customize them for their needs. Uh, the move is expected to incentivize the use of other Huawei products. So that's the thing here, right? It's the, it's the combining the products together. You have the LLM and you have the chips and then you need the hardware that goes around the chips. You then buy into the Huawei ecosystem. According to experts, a coupling of Huawei's Pangu models with the company's AI chips and related products gives the company a unique advantage, allowing it to optimize its AI solutions and applications. While competitors like Baidu have LLMs with broad capabilities, Huawei has focused on specialized AI models for sectors such as government, finance, and manufacturing. Quote, Huawei is not as strong as companies like DeepSeek and Baidu at the overall software level, but it doesn't need to be. Its objective is to ultimately use open source products to drive hardware sales, which is a completely different model from others. So it, uh, it also uh, collaborates with DeepSeek, Baidu, and others, and will continue to do so. In his announcement Monday, Huawei invited developers, corporate partners, and researchers around the world to download and use its new open source products in order to gather feedback and improve them. Quote, Huawei's open source strategy will resonate well in developing countries where enterprises are more, uh, are more price sensitive, as is the case with Huawei's other products, Einstein said. Right? So basically, we have Huawei dropping new open source LLMs that uh, are going to be optimized to be able to run on their uh, AI processors and they're going to go to the developing world and they're basically going to say here, here is a basically a finished product that you can use in order to build out the systems that you care about, right? Uh, and I think that is a valuable, oh, that is a valuable sell right there, right? Being able to go to the customers and say, you can have all of this. Uh, when, you, when you continue to look at American uh, anti-China policies, especially when it comes to AI, uh, and then how, how that degrades other people's experiences, whether you're in Argentina, whether you're in Chile, whether you're in the Middle East, so on and so forth, I think it makes, um, makes the Chinese AI products, again, like the Huawei products, I think it makes them seem uh, more, more appropriate uh, than a lot of the American products out there. And if this is what they're doing today, then you have to be thinking about what they'll do from a year from now, or five years from now, the whole nine yards. And uh, I don't think this is a good route uh, for the United States. As an American citizen, let me say, I don't think our strategy is working. Eli, Eli, you're unpatriotic. You're a traitor. You're saying our, our leaders have ineffective policies. Yes. Yes, I do. I don't think this is working out well. So anyways, and it'll be curious to see uh, how this goes, right? Huawei is an absolute behemoth. You know, I think about with Huawei, an important thing to be thinking about, like with lived experience and uh, the, the, your, the, the, target, the, the target customers you're going for, the thing, about, I think, the thing I think about with Huawei is from years ago. So I was at Interop um, New York, probably about 2012 when Huawei was not nearly as well known, right? So it was getting to be a big uh, tech company at that time, but especially in the United States, wasn't that well known. Uh, but it's kind of considered like uh, China's Cisco or whatever. And, and the curious thing is when you took a look at the Huawei products and you looked at the exact specifications of the Huawei products, uh, they were not, uh, you know, impressive compared to Cisco, right? If you looked at if you looked at the, the, the speed of the backplane, if you look at port speeds, if you looked at, all the normal specs. You're like, yeah, okay, fine, right? It's a, it's a, they're clones of Cisco, whatever else. I'll go buy Cisco. The interesting thing, though, with Huawei at the time was it wasn't the, the, the technical uh, components that they're really selling off of. It's the basically the form factor and the design. And it was very curious, right? So when you buy Cisco equipment, right? So when you buy Cisco equipment, Cisco is selling equipment to basically first world um, projects, right? The idea, the idea is you, you start with a clean, uh, cooled server room, and then you put all this equipment in there, 
right? So the air is going to be relatively clear. Uh, the, uh, it's not going to have a lot of dust and crap in the air. Uh, the temperature is going to be pretty, pretty steady at whatever temperature you set it, right? So the idea with Cisco is you start with a pretty solid server room and then you buy their equipment to put into the server room. And so with that, right, there was a lot of active cooling uh, for Cisco equipment in order to, to be able to, to, <clears throat> to rack all the equipment really close together. There's fans called active of cooling. So basically they're either sucking air in or pulling air out the whole nine yards. And so that acts as a vacuum effect. The problem is, is when you have things like active cooling, is it essentially is a vacuum cleaner that's running 24 seven. So if the environment has dust in it, you're gonna be sucking all of that dust into all of your equipment. And so the curious thing was with Huawei is that they were building hardware that was designed to function in suboptimal environments, but suboptimal office environments, right? So, so Cisco, don't get me wrong, Cisco had their light uh, industrial uh, equipment. So if it was going to go into a warehouse facility, that type of thing, they had their equipment and they had their hardened equipment that could go to Antarctica or whatever, right? But in the office environment, it used active cooling and that type of thing. What was curious is to look at the Huawei's equipment at the time. And a lot of their equipment, <clears throat> even for office environments, uh, would be completely sealed up. It would use passive cooling. It would be designed to, to, to work in environments where air conditioning would air conditioning was not necessarily guaranteed, where the cleanliness of the air was not necessarily guaranteed, that it was sealed and packaged in such a way to be able to work in those places, right? So if you're doing some kind of thing in India or you're doing some kind of thing in Kenya, if you're doing some type of, right, and you don't have that clean room environment, Huawei's equipment would work well. And I thought that was an interesting uh, differentiator uh, between uh, the two companies is because it really showed the kind Kind of market that Huawei was going after. And if you think about that, if you fast forward you know, 12 years at this point, you think about if Huawei has that same mentality towards the market that's going for now, then what does that look uh, in the AI landscape? Uh, again, it may be, it may be hardware <clears throat> that, um, maybe is not as powerful as NVIDIA, but if you can get it as a, at a fraction of the price, maybe it makes sense, right? It's an LLM. These LLMs are more specialized. These LLMs that Huawei is dropping are not as powerful as these other LLMs, but if they're highly, highly, highly targeted, right? There's this whole thing with artificial general intelligence, and I hate it. I despise artificial, the concept of artificial general intelligence. The idea that you're going to have this AI that's just going to have understand everything. It's going to understand everything from how to play Go to how to fly an airplane to how to fix a hamburger. Right? Does that actually make sense? Like, <clears throat> when you take a moment and think about it, does that actually make sense? Do you really want an AI that can do all of these different things? Or is it more practical to have an AI that is much uh, more focused and targeted. And so a focused and targeted AI system may be a quote unquote lesser system. It may be quote unquote, not as technically adva as advanced as open AI or whatever. But if a less advanced system is, is able to run with a hell of a lot fewer hardware resources, and at the end of the day provides the answers that the users actually need, is that not more of an effective solution? Sell, sell hardware at an affordable price that can run open source LLMs that are hyper-focused for your particular niche. That sounds like a hell of a lot better um, sales pitch than frankly the garbage that I'm hearing from open AI and those types of companies, right? You think about it with the American companies, especially with AI, and how much is, are they talking about AGI, right? AGI, AGI, AGI. Uh, Meta right now is going after super intelligence. What is that? Who the fuck knows? It's something, right? But think about this, right? This is all about going after investors. This is all about going after investors and hitting buzzwords. Right? For some reason right now, buzzer, uh, investors are all aflutter. Governments are all aflutter about AI. And so AGI is really scary. So they're, fo they're focused on trying to get that investor money. The problem is, is that the products that they're actually putting out, I, I mean, are they that useful? 
are they that useful? I, I just did the video talking about how Microsoft is now going to be forcing their own employees to use AI. Like Microsoft, Microsoft employees, tech employees at Microsoft are not fully utilizing AI. And maybe there's a reason. Maybe the reason is, is because the actual products, the services that are being provided by AI aren't actually that useful. And so what happens when you have the United States hyper-focused on getting investor money and you have Huawei and you have China focused on shipping something that's usable, <laughs> that people want to use? Oh yeah, artificial general intelligence. Yeah, that seems scary and big and all that. I'm sure that's valuable. I have a literal no use for it. Uh, but this thing over here, this thing, I know how to use that. That right there, that would actually be useful for me. Uh, so it'll be curious. It'll be curious to see how we how we go forward with this whole AI arms race and just how badly the United States is going to lose it, because. Uh, I just don't feel like it's going very well. I don't know. It's just this, like the AI, the AI race between China is just, it's like the United States in a nutshell right now, right? Where we're, we're hyper-focused on investors, but we're not hyper-focused on building products that actually solve people's problems. Right? We're not solving the problems of our society. And instead of focusing on those, we're trying to punish China. And then you look at what China's doing, and they're just, they're just clipping along building crap. <laughs> they're building crap and shipping it. <sighs> oh, anyways. What do you think about this with Huawei uh, dropping their open source uh, LLMs? What do you think about Huawei's uh, business plan of basically uh, less technically impressive LLMs, but more focused to actually uh, target uh, specific sectors uh, or verticals. What do you think about this focus and then basically uh, tying that to their hardware? When you look at the business propositions out there, does that seem more appropriate to you uh, than what the United States is doing, many companies in the United States is doing? I don't know. Put your thoughts down below. Remember, whether it's a thumbs up, a thumbs down, a good comment or a horrible comment, it is all an interaction as YouTube is concerned. And that's our modern world of social media. Uh, with that, see y'all later.